and I want to tremendous blessing there. And we're looking forward to another good week with Brother Travis Parker this week. And I'm excited about the camp meeting this coming week. We, we, it's, a, it's a great uh, joy this morning to have uh, Brother Steve Green and his dear wife with us. And we appreciate them being with us uh, all day today. They'll be with us this morning, and they'll also be with us this evening. Amen. And uh, they're going to be staying right here at the church all day. And so we're excited about the uh, prison ministry. And I was telling somebody that's one of the uh, best ministries I have seen. Uh, we've seen ones get saved and born again uh, in our prisons. I'm glad I serve a Savior, listen, that died for the sinner this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, no matter if you own us uh, drugs or alcohol or whatever is going on in your life, he died for the sinner. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord. Well, this morning, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and open us up in a word of prayer. And then we'll go ahead and have some good singing this morning. A little bit cool this morning. Amen. You're not going to have to run your air conditioning this morning. Uh, I believe you may have to turn on a little bit of heat this morning. But uh, but uh, but uh, we just praise the Lord. And we'll be talking some more about the, the transition. Many of you uh, probably question and ask, preacher, what's, what are we looking at? How long are we going to stay out here? Are we still going to have snow on the ground? what's going to take place, but we'll be talking more about that. So let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you this morning. Lord, I thank you and praise you, Lord, for your love and your grace and your mercy. God, Lord, I thank you for what all you've done for us. Many ways you've blessed us, Father, Lord. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to be able to be here this morning, Lord. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine this morning you blessed us with. God, Lord, I, I thank you the ones this morning, Lord, as we get ready to go in our prayer time. God, Lord, I thank the ones this morning already, telephone calls already, Lord, uh, text messages already, Father, Lord, Lord, that I've received today, Lord, that ones that are hurting, ones that's got health needs, ones that's got family needs, God, Lord, that, Lord, the load's heavy, Lord, already just right here in our church family. But God, Lord, I'm glad, Lord, there's not a need, Lord, you can't reach down and touch. I'm glad, Father, Lord, this morning, Father, Lord, 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 I can't reach out and touch that needle. There's nothing to myself I can do, Lord. Lord, I'm glad, Lord, you'll never leave them or forsake them. God, Lord, I just pray, Lord, this morning, Lord, through the preaching of the Word, Lord, through the singing this morning, God, Lord, we'll give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. God, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you'll reach down and touch that heart, Lord, that stands in need. God, Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's one watching online this morning, God, Lord, they're lost. God, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, Lord, that there be a conviction on their heart, God, Lord, Lord, that need to realize, Lord, the only way to hell, Lord, they, they stand in need, Lord, of a, 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 of a Savior, Lord. And Father, Lord, I just pray, Father, Lord, we can see them get born again and saved. Lord, what a tremendous blessing, Lord. God, Lord, we love you and thank you and praise you in the blessed holy name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And amen. All right, Brother Christopher, come on this time. Amen. And let's go ahead and let's do some singing this morning. Amen. You go ahead and sing right there where you at this morning. Amen. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep vale. Jesus has said I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, filling my soul. Savior and guide. He is the light. In Him is no darkness. Ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. is mine in the bright sunlight 
ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. All right, go ahead and have our offer now this morning. I reckon somebody will be around with the bucket shortly. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for letting us be here this morning. Thank you for this cool weather, Lord. Remind us to be grateful for it. Bless this service, Lord. Bless the singing and the preaching. It'll be your will, Lord. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, now listen up this morning, this offering now. The first time it's going to come around, we're going to go twice on this this morning. First time is going to be your tithe, your offerings this morning. The second round is going to be for Brother Green as it comes around on the second offering. Now, we'll do this. If you didn't, uh, wasn't able to, to give this morning, we'll be taking another offering tonight. Brother Green will be with us this morning, and he'll also be with us tonight. So everything that comes in, uh, all that, when it comes around, I'll be going to Brother Green. But the first time it comes around, it's going to be your tithes and offerings. Many of you, uh, maybe you don't pay it with your tithe and envelopes, you do it in cash. So it'll be your tithes and offerings first go around, and then second go around, and then I'll be for Brother Green. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord, and, and uh, no, no hurry, amen, Christopher's coming around this morning, um, and uh, so he's going to go ahead and take the, take the offering as he gets done with this, and then he'll come back around, and uh, we'll get, uh, if I can find my son somewhere, if y'all dig him out somewhere, honey, you, you run him down somewhere, I need to get him out here helping us out this morning, amen, praise the Lord. Let's go through this morning, I'm going to go through a few announcements this morning, uh, let's, let's, let's don't forget now about the camp meeting this coming uh, this coming week, we're looking forward to it, 7.30 nightly, and uh, Brother Travis Parker uh, will be uh, there at the camp meeting preaching, and so if you can, please be a part of this. Now, Wednesday night services, and I, I, we didn't have any issues with this, I praise the Lord, I know sometimes that gets a little confusing sometimes, but sometimes we'll have somebody show up on a Wednesday night. And uh, but we are moving our services, okay? We're moving our services this next Wednesday night. Again, we'll be there at the camp meeting. Amen. So we're uh, we're looking forward to that. Now we got several other announcements. I'll mention some of those uh, this evening. We got several other uh, announcements that we'll have. Uh, singing groups is coming up, and we're excited. We got several things that's coming up, and also I know in October 
We've got Brother Jeremiah Hart that's going to be with us for a week-long revival, and we're looking forward to that, excited about it, and uh, what a great blessing that's going to be there. So we're excited about the revival. I want to go through and spend some time in our uh, prayer list uh, this morning and spend a little bit of time there. First of all, I want to say, I've got these written down. I, I want to try to reach out to you this morning. Uh, the one that's walking around this morning, Brother Christopher, and I believe he's turned 26 years old. Christopher, you correct me if I'm saying that wrong, but I think I'd ask you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 26 years old. Amen. I talked to Brother Mikey about this, and, uh, and, and we was talking about our boys and, and uh, our, our youngins and the age they are. And I said, brother, I believe we're getting old. Amen. I believe we're starting to we starting to get on and get some age. Amen. Praise the Lord. I got a young and 26 years old, and I got one fixed to be 21 years old. And uh, so happy birthday there to Brother Christopher. And also Miss Kathy Bowie. Miss Kathy, we want to wish you a happy birthday. I believe I see y'all sitting right back there, Brother Leonard. Miss Kathy, happy birthday to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, and also we got to, on Tuesday, uh, be Miss Barbara's. Amen. Harold Barbara, I don't see uh, Harold Barbara here this morning. I hope I'm not lo overlooking them, but uh, that'd be her her birthday there. And so let's let's remember all these ones. Remember the ones that's their birthdays coming up. And uh, we just thank the Lord uh, for how the Lord has blessed there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Miss Perkins, it sure is good to see you, sister. I know I appreciate your faithfulness. I don't want to overlook anybody else, but Miss Perkins, I know you've been going through a very tough time there. Amen. With this, this virus. Miss Perkins has been able to come out and be with us. Amen. And I appreciate all of you been able to come out. It's, I tell you what, y'all have been just uh, been troopers through all of this. You've been a tremendous blessing. And I know it's been a challenge uh, through all the changes we've had to make. But uh, I praise God for the Spirit. I praise God for the great touch we've had down upon the church. And uh, just, just thank the Lord for it. Amen. This morning, let's remember, if you would please, uh, just, just remember uh, the uh, Miss Marlene. This is uh, uh, Miss Margie and Brother Wayne. We've been praying there for Marlene. Miss Marlene went home to be with the Lord and uh, her husband Boyce. Let's remember him in prayer this morning. And I did get to speak with him on the phone. And uh, let's remember to really be praying there for them and lifting them up in the prayer. This is a family of uh, uh, Miss uh, Margie and, and uh, Brother Wayne there. So y'all really be praying there uh, for this family, if you would please. Miss Vera Bowie. Y'all remember Miss Vera, if you would, this morning. Let's pray there for Miss Vera. And uh, really lift her up in, in prayer, if you would please. And also Miss uh, Inez. Uh, Lord willing, I'm going to try this afternoon. I need to go by and see Miss Inez. Uh, I want to go by and visit with Miss Inez. And uh, Miss Inez, is, uh, she has her up days or down days. I believe this week she had a little bit a little bit better days. But y'all really be praying there for Miss Inez. 98 years old. Oldest member that we have. And so y'all really be praying there for Miss Inez, if you would, please. Uh, Bill and Carolyn, uh, y'all keep lifting them up in prayer, if you would, please. Brother Bill's um, still having some health issues there. Also, Miss Carolyn, they're in good spirits. Uh, but y'all really lift them up in prayer, if you would, please. And really keep praying there for them. And I want to try to get back by and see Brother Bill and Miss Carolyn again. Had a good fellowship with them another week. I'm really enjoying that. Miss Carolyn Nix, y'all really be praying there for Miss Carolyn Nix. We appreciate her. As, as Carolyn kind of falls under this uh, category there also uh, with, with us being outside. It's a little bit of a challenge for Miss Nix, and especially with this weather, okay? It's, it's getting tougher. Uh, it's going to get tougher. We get into cooler weather, and so that's why we're going to be looking. If we see how the, the virus is going, I'll be talking with the deacons about that, and we'll be making adjustments in the direction that we feel what the Lord's going to lead us there. And also, y'all keep praying there for uh, Ernest and Bessie. Good to see you this morning, Brother Ernest and Miss Bessie. We love you this morning, and I appreciate you so much. I'll really be praying there for them, lifting them up in prayer this morning. Amen. And Brother Ernest has got some decisions to make uh, about the cancer, and uh, we're just going to trust the Lord, amen, to give you that direction uh, and the peace, Brother Ernest, in what direction to go in there. But I'm glad we can trust him. Uh, that he'll reach down and heal you. Amen. And I appreciate Brother Ernest, a great man of faith there. And also this morning, keep praying there. We've already mentioned Brother Harold, Miss Barbara, uh, Wallace, and Carlene. Amen. And uh, let's keep praying there for Wallace and Carlene. Amen. Keep lift them up in prayer. 
and uh, sent them out to camp meeting several nights this week. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, I praise God. I thought y'all was uh, just get. I got tickled the other night. I thought y'all was going to bring the car to the to the altar call. Amen. Praise God. They was trying to turn around, and I seen them. And the way the camp meeting is, you have to kind of pull around, and uh, they was kind of tied in there. So they was trying to get out. And I said, y'all was pulling up there. I said, praise God. Let's drive on up in here. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I appreciate Watson, Carlene. Amen. Yeah, y'all blessing. Amen. Jay and Debbie, amen. Uh, y'all keep praying there for them. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. I see y'all over there. Jay and Debbie, it's good to see y'all. Thank y'all for your faithfulness uh, being at the house of God. Amen. And Miss Bishop, Miss Bishop, pretty sure they a good job. She's she's doing there. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Miss Bishop, I hope I'm not saying this wrong. I think Miss Bishop's uh, 88 years old. I, I pray I've got the age right on that. Y'all, somebody throw something at me if I'm wrong on that. Amen. But I believe Miss Bishop, I believe you, 88 years old. Amen. And, and uh, faithful, uh, still our church treasurer, and doing a wonderful job there. What a great. What a tremendous, tremendous blessing. Amen. And a blessing you just keep serving the Lord. Amen. Being faithful, serving the Lord. Amen. This morning, if y'all would, please pray. I, I got a telephone call from Miss Stephanie uh, this morning. I know Miss Stephanie's listening this morning. I guess my heart goes out as I guess we could all, every one of us, sometime in our life, We'll probably, and some of you's probably already, you've already been there or either, uh, or either you're there now. Uh, but uh, her heart is just so heavy when they go back and forth to the doctor. James is just getting worse and worse and worse. And, uh, and the doctors just don't give you no answers. And uh, she's just getting discouraged. And I can just hear it in her voice this morning. We've been praying about this for, for quite some time for Brother James. Would y'all this morning really just really be praying? We've already been back in the prayer garden praying. If y'all would, just, let's just really just pray this morning. Let's just trust the Lord for His touch down upon uh, Brother James and give him that healing there. And also for uh, to really lift up Miss Stephanie. I can't lift her up nothing in me. I'm just in this old flesh this morning. But praise God. I'm glad I serve a God this morning that He can lift you back up and put you on your feet. Amen. Give you in those, those deep darkest hours of your night. Amen. And reach down and lift you back up. And so let's really be praying there for them this morning, if you would, please. And also, Brother Ron. Ron, it's good to see you this morning. And I know, Brother Ron, I know you've you've had a long road. I know y'all feel like I'm going a long time in prayer, but I feel like we need to go through prayer. Amen. And spend time in prayer. Brother Ron, I, we love you this morning. Amen. And appreciate you so much this morning. Y'all really be praying there for Brother Ron. And I know Brother Ron's been, uh, had a lot of challenges there. And I know he still have much challenges there. So y'all keep praying there for Brother Ron. Really lift him up in prayer if you would, please. I pray for our nation. Y'all really lift up our nation. I don't know um, I don't know what direction we're going to go in, but I know God's still in control. If you ever knows me as a pastor, I don't, I don't try to bring a lot of politics into the pulpit. Amen. And so I'm very careful about that. Uh, but just be praying about who the Lord lay on your heart to vote for coming up on election, okay? And so really be praying about that, and, uh, and God give you a direction on who to vote for. As your pastor, I won't stand up here at the pulpit. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stand up here and bring politics in the pulpit. Uh, but uh, but uh, y'all really be praying. Pray for our nation, if you would, please. And really be uh, praying there for our president, if you would. And also pray there also for our other churches and pastors. And uh, really be praying there for our uh, all of them that stand in need there. Pray for revival to break out. For revival. Uh, Brother Shannon McKee, y'all really be praying there. Um, uh, they had a stir in there. The church had had um, a gentleman got saved. Amen. Four days later, he went home to be with the Lord. Uh, but he's in glory. Amen. So praise God there. So y'all really be praying there for these surrounding churches. And uh, so y'all just remember all these prayer needs this morning. And let's really just pour our hearts out this morning. I know it's I know it's a little cool this morning. I know y'all a little bit cold this morning, but you still can shout. Amen. You still can smile. Amen. Remember what I've told you. Don't whatever's going on on the, on the outside, I'm glad God's still the same on the inside. Amen. And I'm glad I'm saved when I got up this morning, no matter what I felt like, no matter what my body felt like, I'm still saved, Brother Warren. I'm still born again. Amen. I'm glad this morning I still, I can go to God this morning. I'm glad I've got access through the sun this morning. Amen. I can go in prayer this morning. You can too. Amen. 
And uh, we can ask Him to reach down and touch us this morning. And I'm glad He's faithful to do that. And matter of fact, Brother Warren, you start making your way on up here this morning, if you would, Brother. You sitting out there. I feel like it's, it's led by the Holy Ghost this morning. If you come on up here and pray. Amen. You make your way on up this morning and pray over all these needs this morning. Still got folks coming on in to join this morning. And uh, let's go ahead and let's just really pour our hearts out this morning to the Lord. And I'm, I want to see great revival break out. Amen. A great stirring. I'm looking forward to hearing what Brother Green's got to share with us this morning. I know we've so we read the mission letters. We've seen what God's done there in those prisons. And so uh, I'm looking forward to hearing this morning. Amen. Hearing about the ones getting saved. Amen. Brother Warren, we love you. Come on. Pray this morning. Father, we humbly come before you this day just to give you praise and thanks. Father, we thank you for everything that we have in our lives. Father, we pray for this small church, Father. This small, country-fied, humble church, Father, that you set every direction for this church and the congregation here, Father. We pray that you touch our hearts today. We pray that you touch the heart of the preacher today, Father, that only your words are what are to be spoken here today for us. As he comes forth for the sermon for us, Father, we pray that his message is sent into our hearts, Father, and into our minds and into our actions. We humbly come before you, Father, with our troubles, with our sins. We want to thank you for the forgiveness that you offer us sacrifice that was made for your son Jesus Christ on that cross, the torture that he endured, the ridicule that he endured for our sakes, so that we may be saved. We ask that your message is carried through the Christian Father throughout the world to all the corners of the earth, your message of salvation. Amen message of grace and of mercy. We thank you for our military, Father, for this great nation. We thank you for our local authorities, our police, our first responders. We pray for strength and determination to be in their hearts. Father, if I'm laying on the roadside and I'm looking your way, I pray that these people stand in there for us to be with us and to help us in those times of need. We pray for our doctors and our nurses, Father, that you give them the will to strive forward for the sake of us. Those that are in hospice, those that are suffering. Father, we so humbly come before you as best as we know how to ask for these things and to set the direction in our lives, Father. Every pathway set before us, Father. If we're just supplied with determination, Father, to make it through for your will and for your good deeds. Through Jesus we come with these requests, Father. Amen. Lord, I 
I see another battle out in front of me. I don't know if I'll be able, and I'll go down in with thee. And he yeah. said, Do you? Second Baptist Church in Belton. Amen. I got born again. I got saved. Amen. Wasn't in the building. The building, I, the building today is closed down. Windows knocked out of it. I took a picture of that. That building's hanging up in my office. Just to remember, I'm glad it was a Savior. I'm glad it's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Not in the place I was at. Amen. Praise God. I'm glad. Hey, listen, what denomination that saved me. What mom and daddy that saved me. What the preacher that saved me. I'm glad for a Savior in the name of Jesus. Amen. I got born again. Amen. Got saved. Amen. Get to rejoice. Get to be in heaven one day. Amen. What a tremendous blessing. I thank the Lord for ones who had got saved this year. Amen. And, and uh, what a great joy. And that's the church. Amen. We talk about the church. The church is that body. Amen. And uh, we praise the Lord. Appreciate each and every one of you this morning. Appreciate Brother Green. And appreciate his dear wife. They've been with us this morning. And appreciate the dedication of what the Lord has called in the ministry uh, there in the prison ministry, Rock of Ages. And uh, what a tremendous blessing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear what Brother Green has this morning, what God's laid on his heart this morning uh, in the message. So if you would at this time, uh, go ahead this time. If you got your Bibles this morning, amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, listen to what the Lord has laid on Brother Green's heart this morning. Uh, preacher, you come on at this time if you would, please. It is a joy to be here with you this morning. Thank you for inviting us to come back. Your pastor uh, called me. We scheduled this meeting a good while back and didn't know what was going to happen between first of the year and now, but thank God that we're able to have church this morning. If you have your Bibles, I'll be opening to Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation chapter 20, and I'll read the first six verses. Uh, my wife and I are in our 33rd year serving with Rock of Ages Prison Ministry, and we appreciate the long years of support from this church. And I think Brother Bowie is out there somewhere 
And so I'd like to thank him and the men's Sunday school class for supporting us as well all these years. And uh, we continue to try to do what God's called us to do. I'll say some more about that tonight in the service. Just give a brief update. But I want to preach this morning from the book of Revelation here, chapter number 20, and beginning of verse number 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed upon the sea. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not, the wor had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they that they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now I want to say before I go any further, thank God that he is in control of the situation. The devil's not going to be the victor in the end, even though he is very evident right now. His power is very strong, but yet he will he will be. Uh, he will be judged as well in the end. I want to call your attention though, to verse number six, where the Bible mentions the phrase, "Blessed is he, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection." On such, the second death hath no power. I want to use that phrase this morning and preach for just a few minutes on the Bible truth concerning the second death. Let me pray and then I'll begin of the message. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the truths revealed in it. Thank you, Lord, that you didn't leave anything out that we need to know. I'm glad, Lord, that there's a truth concerning life and death, and there's also con a truth uh, concerning eternity. Bless now, Lord. Help me to preach. Use the message to accomplish your will. All those that are listening, Lord, those that are here in the service, those that are listening online, uh, however, Lord, they're hearing the word. I pray that you'd use it to accomplish your purpose. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. There may be somebody listening today, Lord, uh, that is not saved, has never heard the truth of the gospel, but I pray today you'd help me to proclaim that clearly and may the word of God have an effect on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The second death is mentioned four times in the Bible, but one of the things that, re that I came to realize about this is in the last days especially, but all throughout uh, history, the church history especially, that one of the dis most deceitful devices that the devil uses uh, uh, against man is the second death. He emphasizes the first death. All the emphasis, all the um, f uh, emphasis, all the uh, uh, influence is put upon the first death. But the second death is never considered as a result of that by those that are lost. There will be a first death, but I want you to understand the Bible talks about a second death. I'm preaching this morning on the question, what could be worse than dying? And the truth is that the only thing worse than dying would be the second death or dying again. Dying eternally is what the Bible uh, teaches. Uh, I thought about the things that separate Christianity from other religions. This is one area, but I made a note this morning as I was waiting for the service to begin. And I thought about three J's that separate Christianity from all other religions. These are three things that we have to understand. And these are three things that keep some people that are religious from being saved. But number one, we have to understand the area of justification. Justification is what I believe is righteousness imparted to us. That has to do with our salvation. We're saved by grace 
through faith, we're justified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not by our own works, but by His blood. His blood cleanses us from all sin. And then there's the area of the judgment. And that is where righteousness is demanded. Here in the Bible we'll see this morning where man will be judged and there will be a final judgment. Uh, there will be a judgment of the saved, but there will also be a judgment of the lost. A final judgment. Righteousness will be demanded. There's many religions that preach and teach about uh, uh, just about um, judgment, uh, but they don't go as far as the Bible does. They talk about dying, but there's some that believe death is the grave and it'll be over after I die. And I wish I could say that was true, but the Bible is, does not agree with that at all. Because in the Bible, we believe uh, that there is a second death, a second uh, death for those who are lost. And then there's the area of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, some say he's a good man, some say he's a great prophet, some say he's a moral example for us to follow. But I believe what the Bible says, and it says, Great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh. I believe Jesus Christ is righteousness embodied. And so, to, to believe that, that's the road to salvation. To understand that Jesus is God in the flesh. He said to the disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so I believe that. We can't be saved apart from the righteousness of Christ. But in Him we see righteousness embodied. He took our hell so we could enjoy His heaven. There was a man that came to our church a few years ago, and he wrote a book about his dad's experiences. David Harrell was his name. He wrote a book entitled, Out of the Depths. And he tells the story of his dad's experiences in World War II. His, his father's name was Edgar Harrell. And Edgar was one of the 300 survivors of the sinking of the USS Indianapolis in World War II toward the end of the war. The last U.S. ship that was sunk by enemy contact in the war. 600, they said, 600 of the 900 men who survived the ship sinking were stranded in the water for five days, many with only a life vest to protect them, all of them facing thirst, hunger, injuries, dehydration, and sharks. That all came, they all came face to face with fear, and also they had to consider the possibility that they would die in the water that, uh, that day. Edgar, who was involved in this, he testified of those days when he was alone or felt alone in the ocean. He said these words, clearly there were no atheists in the water that day. Gone was that damnable attitude of pride that deceives men into thinking that there is no God, or if there is, they don't need Him. When a man is confronted with death, it is the face of the Almighty God he sees, not his own. We were all acutely aware of our Creator during those days and nights in the ocean. One day we'll have to be confronted with the same truth. If you have not already, we'll have to look face to face at death and we'll have to determine if, how we're going to face it and how uh, we're going to uh, live at that point. How we're going to, what are we going to do with God at that point? There was a study done in Cleveland, Ohio. Coroners examined the hearts of 15 assault victims who died after being attacked, though their wounds were not life-threatening. So there's a contrast there. There's, a con there's an issue there that has to be discussed, uh, a, pro a uh, paradox. They, had life they didn't have life-threatening injuries, but yet they died. And so they examined the bodies of these victims. Charles Hirsch was one of the researchers that day, and he concluded he later became the uh, lead uh, medical examiner for the World Trade Center attack, identifying bodies. And so this was early in his career. But he was one of the researchers and concluded that 11 of the 15 victims had torn fibers and lesions in their hearts. He said most likely caused by mortal fear. They died, he said, because of what they feared might happen, but didn't. So this study actually proved a truth that it is possible to be scared to death. 
And so this morning, you know, sometimes preachers get accused of scaring people to hell, uh, to heaven. And if I can do that, I will. But uh, I think God's going to have to do that. I'm just saying there's a second death you need to be concerned about. And when you faced with that, then you have to determine what am I going to do from here on. What could possibly be worse than dying? The fear associated with it, that's one of the things that I would think of. Or the unknown factors, the question marks around death. Or could it be the physical and emotional pain that's associated with death? No doubt, if I was stranded in the ocean like Edgar Harrell was, all of these things would have went through my mind. Only With only a life vest in between me and an unknown number of curious, hungry sharks, I'd be considering all of the things I just mentioned. There's something worse than dying, though, I believe. And the Bible describes it as the second death. Four times in the Bible, the verse, four verses in the Bible mention that specific phrase, the second death. All four verses, incidentally, are found in the book of Revelation. And I want to look at those with you in the message this morning, and then we'll get to a stopping place. But let's look at, first of all, chapter 2 in Revelation, verse 11. Chapter 2 in verse 11. The Bible says there, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, I won't read all the context with that. You can read that later. by the second death. Overcomers will not be hurt by the second death. So that brings up a question uh, that was asked years ago, Dr. Harold Seidler, and uh, I like his answer to that question. Somebody said to him, Dr. Seidler, they noticed in the book of Revelation this, this verse, and they said, Dr. Seidler, they said, how can I, how can I be an overcomer? because they wanted to overcome the second day. How could I be an overcomer? His answer was, as most of his answers were very concise and to the point, he said, the only way you can overcome is through the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Amen. And so I'll say that's what's going to make the difference when we stand at the judgment. There's got to be the blood and there's got to be a testimony, a word of testimony. Not only are you saved, but do you know you're saved? My pastor, he said to us years ago, he's in heaven now, but he said to us years ago, he said, there's only one thing better than being saved. And I said, what in the world could that be? And I waited and, he did, and then he told us. He said, the only thing better than being saved is when you know you're saved. And I said, amen. The people that know they're saved, they're the ones that are excited. They're the ones that are busy. They're the ones that are faithful. Some are not, but many of us are excited. And we know that we're saved. I hope you do this morning. In the second time we see the phrase mentioned is in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. We read that just now. The Bible says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, I like that phrase, thousand years, because that has to do with the millennial reign. You know, if you're here this morning and you're saved, but you're not doing very much, I think you need to think about the millennium. Because the uh, judgment of the believer takes place, there's a millennial reign, and the life you've lived as a Christian is, to, is going to determine how you live in the millennium. If you've been faithful, God will reward you and you'll be blessed. But if you've been lazy, if you've been slow, if you've been unconcerned because of His grace, if you've been saved, you'll certainly get to heaven. But during the millennial, uh, you'll wish you had done more for the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard Dr. Tom Wallace say, he, he explained it so well, he said, if you've been a, a haphazard Christian, if you've done uh, very little for the Lord Jesus Christ since you've been saved, he said, uh, you're probably going to end up as a street sweeper in the millennial. And I said, I don't think I want to do that. I've done enough of that here. 
But he said, if you've been faithful and you've done what you could for the Lord, he said, uh, then you'll have a, a, an honored position. And uh, you know what I thought about? He said this along with that. He said, you can take it for what it's worth. But he said, I want you to know a thousand years is a long time to be a street sweeper. Amen. I want to do more. I want to do better for the Lord Jesus Christ because of that. But I'm saying there will be a resurrection and there will be a time of judgment. The Bible here mentions that we, will, we, that, that we see those here who were involved in the first resurrection will not be affected by the second death. And so I want to be in the first resurrection. The first resurrection is, uh, that, that's the church. Amen? The first resurrection. Obviously, there were others that resurrected in the Bible in the Old and New Testaments. Uh, God didn't limit that to one time, but there's been several resurrections in the Bible. But the emphasis here is on the church. The first resurrection is what we call the rapture of the church. There will come a time, and it may not be very long, before the Lord Jesus will appear in the clouds, and He'll receive His bride, the church, and then we'll go to be with Him. And then there will be a tribulation period, of course. But that's the first resurrection here. Then the Bible, I believe, supports a premillennial rapture. That's pre-thousand years, as it's talked about here. The rapture will take place, and then there will be a thousand years of Christ and the believers reigning here on earth. I'll tell you, that's the only time where government is going to be a blessed thing. That's the only time where we'll be glad to be a part of an administration that's overseen by the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't find a biblical reason myself. And if you have, I've not seen it yet. But if you can, help me with that. But I'm not find a, I don't find a biblical reason for the church to have to endure the tribulation period. The tribulation period is for the uh, purifying of the nation of Israel, in my opinion. But the purifying of the church will take place at the judgment seat of Christ. The second death will not affect those who are taken in the first resurrection. And then the third time we see the second death mentioned is in verse number 14. Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says these words, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, you talk about what's worse than dying. Well, look at this. This verse describes something worse than being in hell. Those that are in hell will still be judged again at the judgments, at the white throne judgment. Here in this chapter, and I wish I had time to read it all, I hope you will. Here, though, we see a vivid description of the fate of all those throughout history who have died lost. There have been some in hell for thousands of years, and they've not been judged finally yet. But as I said in the, in the beginning, one of the things that separates Christians is there's a righteous judgment from God. God in, will be involved in the final judgment. Here we see all those that were in, all those that have died lost, all those that are in hell, those that uh, we thought we'd never see again, that have died, but they're allowed a final appearance before the Lord Jesus Christ. It's what is referred to in the Bible as the great white throne judgment. Now, working in prison for as long as I have, I've noticed one thing that's been consistent. And that is, men in prison and women in prison, they want to get out. Amen? People in hell, I think, want to get out also. But now one thing I've seen also is that they understand there can be a legal way out of that institution. If they go through the court system and get their case tried again or reheard, then there may be some leniency, there may be a loophole, there may be a, a reach, a trial. Something may happen to give them some hope. And so uh, I've seen them spend a lot of time working in the legal library trying to get their case prepared to be heard again. Can you imagine, though, with that being said, can you imagine somebody that's been in hell for thousands of years and all that time retaining their memory 
trying to remember something that they could say if they got a chance to appear at the throne of God one more time. Thousands of years, they think of all the things they could have said or should have said, all the things that make them look good and try to get them entrance into heaven. And God will certainly hear all of those. Is Jesus Christ himself is the judge in the white throne. He'll certainly hear their case, but in the end, their case will be denied because one piece of evidence is not there that would set them free. And that is, their names are not in the Lamb's Book of Life. There's the evidence written and secure. There's no question of that. If your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, then you won't be able to go to heaven. You won't be saved at the White Throne Judgment. Their final appeals are heard. The evidence is declared insufficient. And their final judgment is based upon one unresolved fact. And that is, their names are not in the book of life. You see, if a person is born, their name is in the book of life. If they die lost, their names are taken out of that book because they're not considered to be alive anymore. They're dead in their sins and trespasses. And then not only that, their names have never been in the Lamb's book of life because they've never been saved. Since they've never been saved, their names are not recorded and there's no evidence to support their case. The fourth time we see the second death is in chapter 21 and verse number 8. The Bible says here, the fearful, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Here we see a list of those who are said to have their part in suffering of the second death. There's different sins that are mentioned. And so that lets you know it's God one sin separates us from God. If you die lost, if you've lied, if you've been afraid, if you've committed a murder, if you've been a whoremonger, all of those things are important. But I mean sin is sin. And one sin will separate you from God if it's not under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here, though, we see a list of all those who are said to have their part in suffering the second death. There's no need to speculate on this list. And there's no need to discuss it because God is the one who wrote this. But the Bible says here that the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns the fire and brimstone, which is the second day. One old commentator described this group and I really like how he described it. He said, They are such as have chosen the darkness rather than the light, as have loved the lie rather than the truth, as have deliberately resisted and cast aside the grace that might have been theirs. Their part can only be the second day. But then before I get through this morning, I want to give you just a little bit about the overcomer of death and the second death. The Bible says in Romans 6, verse 9 and 10, Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in, that he die, and for in that he died, he died once unto sin, or unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now let me break that down for you uh, real quickly. He died, Jesus Christ died once. He died once, upon, once unto sin. He lives, though, eternally. And the Bible says He lives eternally under God. Note here, if you will, He suffered the first death in relation to or as a result of sin. You understand when Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible says it so well uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, the Bible says, For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. When Jesus hung on the cross, He didn't have His own sins to be accounted for. He had our sins upon Him. Sinless righteousness exempted our Lord Jesus Christ 
from suffering the penalty of the second death. He did die, but that was necessary. But the second death had no power over him because there was no sin to keep him in hell. Amen? He went to hell, but he couldn't stay there because he had no sin. We've been granted a privileged position in this process of what the Bible calls redemption. To be honest, sin has made a valiant effort to destroy us, not only physically, but spiritually and eternally as well. And like it or not, we were born sinners, and the seeds of death and destruction are still infesting our bodies, gradually destroying us in our body and in our minds. Thank God we've been redeemed. Amen. I don't have to live like I used to live. I don't have to be what I used to be. And I don't have to follow the world's example because I've got a higher example to follow. Thank God we've been redeemed. But in that transaction, we were given the many promises, but one of those that I really appreciate is the promise of a new body. I, I was going with a, I was with a preacher. My, my, my wife, our wives were with another. We were with another couple, and we were staying at a at the same hotel. And so, before the service one afternoon, the other preacher said, "You want to walk over to the antique shop across the road?" And I said, "Yes." He said, "It looks like it might be pretty good." So our wives they went off in another direction. So we went and walked around the antique shop. And he said, "Well, what do you think?" I looked at several uh, aisles. And he said, "What do you think?" And uh, I said, I remember this, and I remember this, and I remember this. I said, I thought this was an antique store. <laughs> he said, it is. We're just getting older. <laughs> if you can remember everything in an antique store, then you're not as young as you used to be. And it is kind of funny when you recognize things that somebody might not know anything about but you. But we've been given a great position in Christ. Here's what the Bible says about the promise of the new body. The Bible says, Who shall change our vile body, which has been ravished by sin, change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able, able even to subdue all things unto himself. I love to hear the word redemption said. I love to think about it and study it in the Bible. But you know, when you hear the word redemption, try to remember this. It always involves a price that was paid. Redemption always involves a price. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6.20, it says, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. But it says that we are bought with a price. If you're saved this morning, and I hope you are, it's because a divine transaction has taken place at some time in the past. Amen. Your sins have been bought and paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ, realizing that He has paid such an enormous price for our sins, for us to be saved, should motivate us to love Him, first of all, and then secondly, it should motivate us to live for Him. An old preacher said this. He said there are two laws that should govern our life and what are doubtful things. You know, we, we run across those often in the Christian life. Should I do this or should I not? He said this is how we should choose. He said, first, he said the arresting of oneself in the doing of anything which threatens to become our master. And certainly we can understand that through addictions to drug and alcohol and pornography and things like that. It becomes a, we become a slave to the sin. And he said, if that's possible with what you're doing, then you need to give it up. You need to choose something different. He said also, the second thing, uh, the second law that governs our life in doubtful things is abstaining from anything that threatens to be a stumbling block to another person, especially another Christian. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, he does not mention specifically what the price paid for our redemption was. But he didn't have to. You can understand that it was a price that we could never pay. The weight of our sin was far too great and the damage was far too extensive. 
It was not only the blood of a willing sacrifice, but it was also the life of a sinless man. Jesus became our Redeemer through His substitutionary death on the cross at Calvary. He paid the price and we enjoy the benefits now of forgiveness and peace. Redemption involves two benefits. Forgiveness for all of our sin, past, present, and future. Amen. And then a promise of a new body. In Titus 2.13, it speaks about the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And most people, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong, most people read that verse though, and they say the blessed hope is the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I begin to study that, and I think it believes that I think I believe it says this also, and maybe instead. When he says well, the blessed hope and the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a separation there. I believe the blessed hope is receiving the new body. And then the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ will be able to be enjoyed by all of us. How can you enjoy His appearance if you have to live in this body? The Bible says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And in Romans 5, 8, and 9, But God commended His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Thank God. Let me close with this. This was, a, according to Life magazine, years ago, one of the richest, most powerful men in the United States was named William Randolph Hearst. And when he was 75 years old, he forbid the mention of death in his presence to those he worked with or those he spent time with. However, when yielding voting control of his publication empire to an attorney, the man who had arrogantly and brilliantly ruled a $200 million empire acknowledged death, although he did not mention it by name. He said this in his legal statement. He said this, merely read that Mr. Hearst had become conscious of the uncertainties of life. End quote. He never said death, but yet at 75 years of age, he certainly considered that. He should consider that. Amen? But I wonder how he looked at death, if he was afraid of it, if he was prepared for it. I have no idea. But judging by that phrase, judging by that attitude, I'd have to say he was not ready. There was a, this was a phrase spoken by a man, I believe, who had great power financially and commercially, but had no influence when it came time for his inevitable death. To William Randolph Hearst, it seemed nothing was worse than death. I'll give you this, and we'll get ready to pray. And Pastor will come. If you can remember this, it'll help you remember maybe something I've said today. But this is what I call a foundational doctrinal truth based on some things I said this morning. And here it is. If you've been born once, you'll die twice. And if you've been born twice, you'll only die once. Amen. I don't want to be buried in a graveyard. I want to be buried in a cemetery. A cemetery is a place where you plant things. They're going to come up again. The grave is where you put dead things. The graveyard. I'd rather be planted. I don't want to be buried. Amen. But thank God we can have hope. We may die. Jesus may come again, but if not, we may die. But we don't have to die without hope. If you're here this morning you've never been saved, I hope you'll talk to Pastor Moore or somebody here at the church. I hope you'll contact the church and let them know that you're concerned about your soul, that you heard the message this morning, and you're concerned about the second death. God help us this morning as we look to Him. Lord, bless the message this morning. Your will be done now as we close the service or prepare to close. In Jesus' name, amen.
This morning we're talking about the second death. What a message this morning. Amen. The second death, many times we don't think about it. We don't, we don't think about it in the book of Revelation. And I, I, I was thinking this morning as the preacher was preaching this morning, and, and he, he took us over and took us over into Revelation chapter 2, over into verse 11. That we send the church of Smyrna. I thought about this. I thought about some of the times that we're going through right now. We see a seems like we're seeing a, a stirring. We see what's took place here at our church and what's took place in other churches. The church of Smyrna was known as a persecuted church. And I thought about right now where we're at now. Uh, you know, we're, we're getting out of our comfort zone. Our comfort zone, we've sat in churches, and I've told you this before, we sat on our padded pews and we've sat in our spots and not want to move and our air conditioning, our heat and our uh, got in a comfortable place. Getting comfortable can be a dangerous place. But during persecution, some of the greatest times we've seen the church grow. And I believe we see here in the church and the scriptures that I believe we see uh, one that through persecution seen the church grow. People get saved. People get born again. And I just wonder here this morning as the preacher brought a tremendous, tremendous message this morning. We've, we've heard the last two messages we've heard. Y'all notice we also on Friday night preaching out of the book of Revelation. Also preaching on salvation. And I just wonder uh, this morning, somebody here this morning, you're not sure if you're saved or lost. But the mic's going to play this morning. I don't want to dismiss a service without an altar call. This morning, you may be here this morning, you're not sure about your salvation. The preacher's already preached. He preached a very clear message this morning. You do not want to be part of this second death. If you're here this morning, it does not matter about your church membership this morning, or if you're listening online. It does not matter. Listen, to get all those things. We get called up this morning on things that's going on, things going on at home, things that's taking place at the church, all those things. When it comes down to the end of your life, no more is none of that going to matter. It's either going to be as saved or lost. Saved or lost. And I really believe it all my heart. I believe we're seeing the Lord doing something. I think we're seeing a stirring. I believe it's I'm, I'm all about we come to the house of God and we come and we worship and y'all know me as well as anybody. I love to come here and just enjoy, enjoy the good singing. I enjoy just the good time we can shout, we can praise. The fact of the matter is, if it's going to be down to whether you're saved or you're lost, we can praise all day long in the flesh and die and go to hell. It's only going to be through that shed blood of Jesus Christ. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus. Do you remember a time in your life when you truly got born again? You truly got born again. You be a Sunday school teacher, a, a, a preacher, it doesn't matter. You die lost and spend eternity in hell. But in my place, I pray this morning, don't worry about what nobody else thinks. Step out of your vehicle this morning. Maybe you need to come down here and Come down and pray this morning. Maybe you need to come down and pray for somebody. Maybe, maybe you got a family member that's lost. And I'd say we all have families that's lost. You need to come down and get around this altar this morning and pray. Pour your hearts out to the Lord this morning.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, what a great, great touch this morning. What a wonderful message this morning from Brother Green. Uh, tremendous, tremendous message. I did want to mention that. And thank you, Brother Green, for mentioning that. I got kind of in a hurry. Uh, Brother Green, he'll say more tonight. I'm, I'm looking forward to being with us all day. And uh, he'll say more tonight about, about the ministry there. And I'm looking forward to that. I'll get to spend a little bit of time with him, uh, him and his dear wife, this afternoon. But, uh, but I appreciate the men's Sunday school class, which is a class that I'm part of. appreciate the dedication through the years. I've uh, been supporting Brother Green's uh, this ministry for many, many years, well before I ever came here as a, as a pastor. And I uh, appreciate you so much. Amen, Brother Mikey, and also Brother Leonard. Amen. Uh, taking care of the class there. What a tremendous, tremendous blessing. Amen. I appreciate our, our missionaries. I appreciate the blessing they are to us, and I'm looking forward, looking forward to us being able to do more uh, in our missions, amen, as a, as a church, amen. All right, well, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer, and uh, we're looking forward, if he was unable to give this morning uh, to Brother Green, this dear ministry, uh, please, tonight, we'll be back tonight, we'll take another offering tonight, and uh, listen, you'll never go wrong taking care of the man of God, amen. You never go wrong, amen, praise the Lord, and, and giving to the Lord. You never go wrong, amen. I appreciate you being in such a tremendous giving church also, and we love you and appreciate you so much. But be careful as you go and have lunch today, amen. Spend a little bit of time resting uh, today, and uh, let's be dismissed uh, in a word of prayer. I'm going to have Brother Green come on and uh, dismiss us in a word of prayer, amen. Our Father, we're certainly thankful this morning for your presence with us and for reminding us of some important truths from the Word of God. Thank you for those, Lord, that listen, and I pray that you continue to speak to hearts uh, after the service today. Lord, bless us now with your presence as we leave. I pray that you prepare us for tonight. Thank you for your goodness and mercy toward us. And Lord, we're grateful for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen.